What is up guys? My name is Lex. Today we're playing a $3,500 World Poker Tour main event here at the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. This is the biggest buy-in tournament I've ever played in my entire life. It is stacked full of crushers with millions of dollars worth of earnings. In this tournament, there is $6 million in the prize pool and over $1 million for first place. Let's get started. We are starting this tournament off with 50,000 in tournament chips. It's also one hour levels, which is great for me. I'm a cash game player, so I'm used to playing deeper stacked and not having to shove all in all the time. So this will allow me to play post flop and hopefully pick my spots well. I ended up losing some hands before picking up ace king. I three bet to $3,000 and get a call. The flop comes out king high. I see bet very small and my opponent folds and we take down our first pot. Tournament poker is just so much different than cash game poker. You can't rebuy and add on chips. So all the chips you have are all the chips you're going to get. It honestly makes it very competitive. It feels a lot more like a sport instead of a game. Even though this tournament is a huge buy-in, my table is very soft in my opinion. A lot of people splashing around getting in there and not one single pro that I recognize here on the table. I end up opening up ace king to 3x, get three callers, we go four ways to a king eight nine board. Out of position, I check and the action checks all the way around. Turn deuce of diamonds, I decide to bet. Player next to act makes the call and the rest of the players make the fold. So we're heads up, out of position to the last card, which is a seven. I decide to bet small here, 5,000 chips. And my opponent puts in a raise on the river. And I make the snap call. He was bluffing with ace 10 offsuit. We take down our first pretty big pot. Our stack has now risen up to 67,000. Still in level three now. Blinds are 200, 300. There's a later position open to 1,000. There's a call for 1,000. I have pocket kings in the small blind. I decide to go 5x with my raise. 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 Hijack player pretty quickly folds and the cutoff player who had been splashing around a lot decides to let his cards go as well and we take down a small one. We've made it through four hours of playing poker so far. On our second break, 741 people have entered this tournament so far on day 1B. On Friday was day 1A and around 1,000 people entered that day. So we're trying to survive all the way to day number two and flopping a set is definitely going to help. We call it a raise with pocket sixes and smashed a set on the flop. We check, action checks all the way around. Turn is a jack. Sometimes I would check here, but this time I decide to lead out big. I make it $5,000, a little over a pot size bet. And unfortunately, everybody folds. We picked up some decent hands so far, but we haven't won any massive pots. But we're just trying to survive, trying to play conservative, good, smart tournament poker. And just trying to make it to day number two. I think I've only played maybe 15 live tournaments in my life. My Hendon Mob looks pretty terrible with only $5,000 worth of cumulative earnings. Our stack is now up to 87,000 from a 50k starting stack. So, so far, things are going pretty well. An interesting hand develops here with pocket jacks in the big blind. Blinds are 300, 600, 600, and there's a 3,000 chip raise from early position. Facing such a big raise from an under the gun player, I decide to make the call after the cutoff player makes the call. I'm trying to play small ball poker here, trying to see a lot of flops, trying to smash a board and build a pot then. We do smash this board with a set on ace, king, jack, rainbow, our second set of the day. I think this could get pretty big, but the action checks all the way around. Turn is a brick. I bet $6,000 praying to get called by anything, but my opponents make the fold. So kind of a trend so far. We're making some sets and some big hands, but nobody else has anything at all. My strategy for this tournament is much different than cash games. In cash games, I take a lot more risk, three betting, four betting pre-flop, maybe pulling some bluffs here and there. But in these tournaments, I have to play a little bit more conservative, especially against a very call happy table like the one I'm on. My plan is just to sit back, wait, let these people blast off their stack, and hopefully I can be the recipient of some of that. And this next hand gets pretty crazy where there's an under the gun min raise to 1600. There's three callers. I'm in the big blind with seven four offsuit. I know it's a terrible hand, but I'm getting such a great price. So I make the call and we get rewarded with a king seven four rainbow flop. 
making two pair. Initial Razor under the gun checks and now under the gun plus one who is a recreational player. He is playing a lot of hands. He makes it 3,500. Now the small blind makes the call with bottom two pair here. I got to be raising this one up. There is flush draws, straight draws. I don't want to give my opponent some free cards. I contemplate my options and decide to raise to 11,000. This pot is getting pretty big here. Back over to under the gun plus one who bet into all these people and he decides to ship his whole stack in there. He's all in for 40,000. Small blind makes to fold and the action's back over on us. 42.7 looks like. Yep, 42.7. Uh, call. King or an eight? Let's go. King or We get it all in good. Two pair versus king eight for top pair. We just have to fade a king, an eight, or runner runner pairing the board to stack my opponent. We will have over a 100,000 chip stack if we can hold here. <clears throat> There's just something about being all in in a tournament that gets your blood pumping. The adrenaline is definitely flowing right now. The run good continues when I raise pocket fives, get two callers, and we flop another set on ace five three. I bet small and get two callers. Turn is a king. I size up to 5,000. Only the cutoff player makes the call. River is another king. We make a full house. Pretty sure my opponent just has an ace like ace jack, ace queen. He doesn't seem like he's in the mood to fold. So I size up to 18,000 and we get snap called. We show and we are good. Full house? You're good. Thanks, yeah. Very nice. Thank you. I have to say it feels nice to flop a set river a boat and get paid off especially in a huge tournament with one million dollars for first place our stack is up to 174,000 now from a 50k starting stack things are going pretty good so far we have over 220 big blinds which is just perfect in a tournament to be that deep next hand there's a hijack raise i three bet ace king to 2.5x he makes the call the flop is ace seven seven two diamonds and now he leads into me this is an interesting spot whether i want to call or raise given the fact that i don't have a diamond i think a raise is good here to try to get called by all of his flush draws but if he's bluffing on such a dry board i want to allow him to continue to bluff so i just make the call turn is a 10 he checks now i don't want to give free cards to his flush draws or his weaker aces so i bet and he tells me he had pocket jacks and he folds. It is around 6.30 p.m. now. We've been playing for around six and a half hours and we get a 90 minute dinner break. It's great. I live eight minutes away from Hard Rock so I get to go home, hang out with my little buddy Rogue, take a nap and eat dinner there. Back now from our dinner break, it's around 8 p.m. Our stack is looking good and I feel completely rejuvenated after going home, playing with my dog, taking a nap and eating some dinner. We're back at the table now. There's a later position raised to 3,000. I'm in the big blind with a seven of clubs. I have to defend here, so I make the call. This player does cover me, so I don't wanna be playing some massive pots with him because he could bust me. We flop an ace high flush draw on a king high board. This could be a huge pot, but like I said, I have to tread lightly. This opponent covers me, so I have to be a little bit careful. I decide to check call this bet, and the turn is a seven, now giving me bottom pair. I check, and he continues for another bet here. My hand is just way too strong to fold, but I don't want to raise here and get jammed on, so I call again on the turn, looking for a club, a seven, or an ace on the river, and... We don't get it it pairs the board i check over for a third time and my opponent continues to bet he bet the flop the turn and now the river i just don't think our seven is any good we missed our flush so we just fold 
We've been playing now for around nine hours. We're halfway through level number nine, over a thousand entrants so far. Our stack has now risen to 191,000 from a 50k starting stack, sitting about 125 big blinds. Next up here, under the gun raises. I've pocket tens and make the call. We see a terrible board of king, queen, high. When I check my opponent bets and we let this one go, we've now made it to level number 10 and day number one ends when level number 10 is over. So there's 42 minutes left on the level. We have 423 players left. We're sitting with about 150 big blinds, so we're in a great spot to make it to day number two. Next hand, I have ace eight of clubs in the cutoff. I make the raise. The big blind makes the call. Queen, 10, deuce, two clubs. We flop the nut flush draw. Big blind checks, and on this board, I should have the range advantage of having all the big pocket pairs like aces, kings, ace queen pocket tens queen 10 i bet 3000 and he makes the call we missed our flush draw with this guy earlier so let's bink it on the turn not this time it is a four when he checks i do feel like this is a spot where i can double barrel he should be folding all of his pocket pairs now that we're losing to all of his tens and we can still get value from weaker flush draws and straight draws so i bet pretty big here i make it 12,000. big blind thinks for a while and decides to make the call, which is not what we wanted. But maybe we can suck out here on the river. Nope. Again, we miss our flush, but we do make a pair. When he checks, I decide to check this one back. And he shows ace queen for top pair top kicker. The tournament director now says with around 10 minutes left on the clock, they're going to pause the clock and we're all going to play four more hands. And if you survive, you get to back up your chips for day number two. First hand of the four, we get pocket aces. We three bet, and unfortunately, everybody folds. The last hand of the night, we get pocket queens in the big blind. Under the gun raises to 3x, which is a very big sizing. He covers me, by the way, with around 200 big blinds. The button makes the call. Given the fact that this is the very last hand of the night, my thoughts at the time was versus an under the gun 3x raise by an opponent that covers me, I don't want to go bust on the very last hand of the night and just throw away 10 and a half hours of playing. So I'll make a very conservative call and we flop another set, the fifth set of this day. We are running hot. King Queen 7 on this board, I check. Under the gun bets pretty big, 7,500. Button folds on this dry board. I could be putting a raise but I want to allow him to continue to bluff. So I just make the smooth call and the turn is another king. We make a full house. I check over to him and he continues to bet now for 11,000. I understand that my flat call in the big blind after the button calls with pocket queens is pretty terrible, but this is a tournament. It's not a cash game. I cannot add on to my stack if I lose. I want to be playing small ball poker preflop, which means I keep the pot small preflop and then try to smash a board and try to start building the pots then. Let's say I 3-bet to something like 18,000 and my opponent 4-bets me. What do I do now with pocket queens? Sitting over 100 big blinds deep in the tournament on the last hand of the night. So I made the conservative call and it pays off for us this time, making a full house. After thinking for a while, I put in a check raise with queens full of kings to 3,500, hoping he has a king or maybe a straight draw or aces that he doesn't want to fold. The action is now back over on Under the Gun. I would love to get some action here and maybe double up on the last hand of the night, but he decides to let this one go. We do take down a pretty good pot, the last hand of the night, and we have officially made it to day number two of the $3,500 main event. A pretty good stack too, 206,000 we are bagging for the next day. After a 50K starting stack, I would say that day number one went pretty well. All right, guys, we did it. We outlasted a bunch of people today and ended up making it through day number one. Almost 11 hours of poker, 10 one hour levels. A lot of poker. It is a grind. Tournament poker is tough, but we made it through day number one of the $3,500 main event championship series with 206,000 chips, which is around 82 big blinds coming back tomorrow. Today, I felt like I ran 
very well. I flopped some sets, made some two pairs, caught some punts, but I also feel like I played very disciplined and patient too. I tried to kind of just like bob and weave, bob and weave, play small ball poker, not get too crazy. I didn't punt off my stack. I was just collecting chips, collecting chips, playing smaller pots, making it through, conservative, getting through day number one, which is what we did. Day number two tomorrow, starting at noon. Gonna get some sleep tonight. I'll see you guys tomorrow. It is now the next day, Sunday morning around 10 a.m., an early wake-up call for me, but I want to get out there and get a nice walk-in with Rogue, let him have some fun and enjoy some sun. While also stretching my legs, I could potentially play in another 11-hour session today. We get to our seat around 12 noon, right before the day is about to start. I unbag around 206,000 chips, head over to the tournament clock. We're starting with level number 11. There's 659 people left from day 1A and day 1B. 252 people get paid for a min cash of around $5,000. So our goal now is to play good, solid poker and try to make the money. Our first table breaks very quickly and we get moved to another table where we start running hot. First here with pocket tens, we call an under the gun raise on the button, go heads up to a king high board. She checks over to me. I go back and forth whether I want to check here or bet. I think on this board I can bet once and check back most turn cards, which is what I do. I put out a bet and she makes the call. The turn is a queen, another card over our pair. So when she checks, I check this one back. River's a brick, she checks again. I check back again and she shows pocket sevens. Tens are good to take down our first pot of the day. After playing more and more hours of tournaments, it's amazing how much different it is from a cash game. Your tournament life is just so fragile compared to a cash game where you can just always rebuy. If you run bad or your timing is off or you lose some big all-in pots, you can be out within a matter of one or two hands, which is why I'm playing a little bit more conservative. Next, I have pocket queens only about 30 minutes into this morning here. Day number two, we've already picked up two big pocket pairs. I make it 5,500 and get three callers, which is pretty unlikely for a day two of a main event, I would guess. Four ways to an ace high board. I decided to just check this one all the way down and luckily our queens are good. We take down our second pot of the day. In this next hand, we play a pot with a guy who I have no idea who he is because I don't play tournaments. I'm not sure if he's good or well-known or just a recreational player, but he seems to be mixing it up a lot. He's playing a ton of hands and likes to talk, makes the table pretty fun, but he seems to be a little bit loose. I make it $5,500 from earlier-ish position with King Jack. He makes the call. We get the quintessential driest board in poker history, King seven deuce rainbow. We make top pair. When he checks to me, I bet out one big blind and he makes the call. Turn 10, the board is completely rainbow with his top pair holding on such a dry board. When he checks, I check back for deception, pot control, and to allow him to bluff the river. The last card is an eight and he leads out for a 5,000. I think about just calling here to take the conservative route, but against this player, I do think that he will call me with all of his King X holdings, maybe his 10 X or even seven or eight X. I just don't think he's ever folding a pair to me. So I put in a value raise here on the river to 17,000. We get snap called and we are good. We are running pretty good on day number two so far and it gets better with pocket kings. We've already got tens, queens, and now kings within the first level of the first day of day number two. Folds to me in the small blind. I raise here to about two and a half or three X the big blind. The big blind completes with a call. We see a queen six deuce board, super dry. I decided to bet small here, 3,500, and he calls. Turn nine, I think it's a great spot here to size up. I don't think he's ever going to be folding a pair, blind versus blind. I make it 15,000 after not thinking for too long. My opponent in the big blind makes the call. The river's another queen, and in this spot, I'm not sure if I should be betting going for value or not. I feel like if I bet here and he raises, it's going to be in a really nasty spot. So I decide to check over to him. He instantly checks back, and pocket kings are good. Every single hand on day number two is just so intense and that is because the stakes are so high. No rebuying means that every decision you make 
means something. If you make the wrong decision, it could have cost you your entire tournament life. So far today, things have been going very well. We almost have 300,000 in our stack after starting at 206k. We've made it to level number 12. Next up, big stack makes it 2.5 big blinds. There's a call. I have pocket eights on the button. I call 2.5 big blinds. And now the small blind ships it all in for around 20 big blinds. Initial razor folds. Other player folds. I get a count with pocket eights never folding for 20 bigs. So I make the call. We're not all in for our tournament life, but losing 20 big blinds would never be fun. My opponent has ace six offsuit. We're in a great spot until the board comes ace high. We need an eight on the river, which we get. We river a set after my opponent hits an ace on the flop. Like I said earlier, timing and run good is almost everything in tournament poker. Hitting a set on the river to stack this guy. We're now on break after level number 12. 504 people left, 250 get paid. We're almost halfway there. After eating a sandwich for lunch, we're back from break with a nice healthy stack of over 300,000 now. Unfortunately, the next level and a half don't really go our way. There is only 387 people left, but we've chipped down to around 250,000. As my chip stack dwindles down and the blind levels go up, I'm trying not to let the frustration get to me. Try to play good, solid poker and let other people bust out before me. We have an opportunity to add some chips to our stack with Ace King now under the gun raises. I make the call and the big blind calls as well. Three ways to a flop of ace, 10, nine, two clubs making top pair, top kicker, backdoor flush draw. She continues for a bet. I make the call and the big blind folds. Turn four of clubs, bringing in the flush and she checks over to me. I consider betting here, but with top pair, king high flush draw, I would rather check for pot control and also to allow her to bluff on the river. I check back and the last card is a six. She decides to lead out for a pretty hefty bet. I make the snap call and she shows Queen Jack for a bluff. We take down a pretty big pot here. That was a pretty nice gift she gave us there on the river. Our stack is now up to 345,000, which is the biggest stack we've had all tournament. This table ends up breaking. We get moved over to the main poker room and this table looks very tough. A ton of chips on the table and a lot of good players. We can't seem to get anything going at this new table, but the good thing is that people are dropping like flies. 315 people left, only 63 left till we make the money. Unfortunately, this next hand, I finally pick up a playable hand in the big blind with pocket sevens, but there's an early position raise and then a three bet by the cutoff, so I just have to let these sevens go. I don't play another hand for the half an hour and things are getting serious. 279 people left. We're super close to the money bubble. Everyone has tightened up. None of the short stacks want to bust right before the money. I have 300,000 in my stack, which is good for a little over 20 big blinds, which is a ton of chips to have right before the money bubble. I should be able to just cruise right in and not have to worry and hope that about 20 people bust out before me. All right, we are in the car, which looks like bad news, but it's not. We're on a 90 minute dinner break. It's 628 right now. We have about an hour and 10 minutes left in the dinner break. I'm heading home to take Rogue out, grab something to eat, relax a little bit. There's 261 people left out of a starting field of over 2,000. 252 get paid. So we're only nine spots away from getting paid. When we get back, we should have around 30-ish big blinds, and that is definitely enough to try to just cruise into the money. My table's pretty tough. I'm a little card dead, but uh, this tournament's tough. It's a grind, man. It reminds me back in my wrestling days when I would go to a big wrestling tournament, two or three days long, and you're just being there all day. We've been playing now for like 17 hours or something. It's tough. Uh, it's tough mentally, tough physically, but I trained for this when I was younger. I've been you know, doing this kind of stuff since I was five years old, so I'm ready for it. Just gotta try to run good and uh, hopefully we can start accumulating chips and I'll meet you guys back at the table in about an hour. It's around 8 p.m. and they've installed an action clock. We're back from dinner break and you have 30 seconds to act every 30 seconds after that. You must use one time chip. We start with 10 of these, so we'll see if we ever have to use any of these. With around 20 big blinds in our stack, we have to play extremely tight, only six away from the money. So we end up folding nine five suited on the button. We are playing hand for hand now. 254 people left. Only two people have to bust and we end up making at least $5,600. After 30 minutes of hand for hand play, there is finally an all in and a call and someone busts out. So we're officially in the money. 
We've locked up at least $5,000, my biggest tournament cash to date. Now that we're all in the money, we can finally go back to playing real poker. A lot of the short stacks bust out very quickly, so we're quickly down to maybe 230 people left, but unfortunately the next hour, I just don't pick up any playable hands. The blinds are going up, my stack is going down. With around 20 big blinds left, I end up folding out my big blind. With 17 big blinds left, I'm in the small blind. There's an early position raised to 2.5x, and I look down at pocket aces. The player who raised from early position has a ton of chips. I would say over 200 big blinds, so with 17 big blinds left, I think the best play here is to rip it all in, which is what I do. He gets a count. He realizes that it's only around 17 bigs, so he makes the call. I show pocket aces, and he shows pocket tens. We're in a great spot to double up, but our tournament life is on the line. We gotta hold if we wanna stay in. Aces hold for a massive double up. Right after the money bubble, this was so needed here. We needed this double up down to 17 big blinds. Now we are comfortably sitting at around 37 big blinds, which is just amazing. Timing, run good, and patience is what pays off for us. We waited forever. We folded for so long and finally picked up pocket aces, got the huge double up, 375K in our stack, over 30 big blinds. There's now less than 200 people left with two levels left in the night. We've almost made it to day number three. As time goes on, we're getting shorter and shorter as the blinds go up and we don't pick up any hands, but we do get ace king under the gun. I raise and the big blind calls. We go heads up in position to a flop of ace high. Great for us. I bet small and he folds. So we add a little bit more to our chip stack. Things are getting very serious now with less than 200 people left in the main event and $1 million for first. Nobody wants to make a mistake and lose their stack. So everyone has taken their time with their decision. After about an hour or so of folding, not picking up any playable hands, we do make it to another break where we get to go outside and get some fresh air. All right, we came outside to get a little bit of air. We are on level 18 break. Um, this is exhausting. Like, I usually play four to five hour sessions, and we're on like hour 18 or 19 right now. Um, pretty sick double up there with pocket aces, ace king flopped an ace. Missing every single time I call on the big blind. I now have 260,000 chips, which is gonna be like 17 or 18 big blinds. There's 168 people left. So, out of 2,000, we're down to 168, just chugging along, trying to stay. Uh, Trying to stay tight, conservative, pick my spots, and so far it has been paying off. We got two more hours tonight to play. Let's hope for some run good. Let's go. We are back from the break, and there's a ton of big stacks on my left, which makes it a little bit more difficult for me. I have about 17 big blinds now after the blinds went up, so I'm basically just waiting for a hand to go all in with and trying to double up, but unfortunately the cards are not panning out in our favor. We're just getting some trash hands, ace deuce offsuit, I make the fold. We're in the big blind now with queen three offsuit. I make the fold as well. We finally pick up a playable hand with queen jack offsuit in the big blind, but there's a shove all in for 18 big blinds and we're not gonna call off our whole tournament life with queen jack offsuit, so I make the fold. The good thing about not picking up any playable hands is that we are hitting some money jumps now. 144 people left, $7,100 guaranteed now if we bust, but the goal is to double up as always. We are now down to 13 big blinds. It is all in or fold for us, but unfortunately in the small blind, we had to let that one go. We're now in the cutoff and get dealt in a beautiful 9 Three of diamonds, no, can't shove with that. Gotta let that one go until we finally get a shovelable hand. Queen, 10 of clubs, under the gun for 12 big blinds. This is it for us. Our tournament life is on the line. We are all in. If we get called here and lose, we're going to be out of the tournament in around 135th place. We're actually hoping for everyone to fold here because taking down two and a half big blinds, just pre-flop, 
is fine with me, which is what happens. Everybody lets their cards go, and we finally win a small pot. I normally play cash games 200 to 500 big blinds deep, so trying to play 20 to 15 to 10 big blind deep poker is just very weird for me, but what I've tried to do is just survive survive every single level let other people get out try to pick my spots correctly wait and wait and wait and so far it's paid off we've made it all the way to level number 20 the last level of day number two 135 people left the more people that bust out before us the higher the pay jumps get for us however with only around 10 big blinds we're gonna need to make something happen here in this hand we are in the cutoff under the gun shoves all in for around 20 big blinds and i look down at ace king finally we've been waiting for this spot all night long i've been folding for what seems like forever we waited and waited and got aces versus tens for a double up and now ace king with 10 big blinds under the gun is all in for a pretty big stack so i feel like he most likely here has a pocket pair or ace king himself but 10 big blinds ace king no way i'm folding I rip it all in there. The button folds, small blind folds, big blind lets his cards go. We show our ace king and my opponent has pocket nine. So it is a flip. We are slightly behind here. We need to hit an ace, a king, a straight or a flush to stay alive. Mm. The flop is jack 10 8 actually not too bad we have a gut shot and two over cards until the turn is a nine giving my opponent a set now we only have four outs in the deck we can only hit a queen to make a straight and that is it no ace or king will be good we're all in here it all comes down to this river card oh my god wow i feel like it was the camera again yeah <laughs> Queen on the river to make the nut straight. Oh my god, what a sick hand. The last level of day number two, and we bink the four outer to stay alive for the full double up. I've been all in and won some massive pots in cash games, $8,000, $10,000, $14,000 pots, but the rush of being all in for your tournament life in the main event tournament with $1 million for first place is like no other feeling out there in poker insane insane spot pocket nine shoves under the gun we wake up with ace king with with 10 big blinds. my hands are shaking this is insane 10 big blinds we shove ace king he turns a set we river the nut straight they don't want us to die we have about i think 126 people left we have 16 big blinds run good gods keep coming at us baby 45 minutes left for day number two we are back at the table after that crazy all in and double up with over 400k now the people keep on dropping out and in level number 20 there's 117 people left we're guaranteed at least eight thousand one hundred dollars in cash money even if we bust right now but we're trying to stick along try to make it to day number three the tournament director now states that we'll be playing four more hands and after that if you still have chips you'll bag them up for day number three we fold the first two hands in the third hand of four we pick up queen seven offsuit we let that one go and then the very last hand of day number two we look down with jack six offsuit we make the fold which means we are bagging some chips we made it to day number three go 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 get it Oh my God, I'm exhausted. We made it to day number three of the $3,500 main event. Oh, I'm so tired. This is insane. Rogue has been unfortunately inside the whole day. What a sick run this has been so far. Ran really good day number one. Today, um, ran good early on. Then card dead, card dead, card dead. Aces double up. Ace king versus nines hit a freaking queen on the river coming back tomorrow day number three there's about 100 people left so we're in the money now guaranteed like 90 100 i think um i'm gonna come back with i think 15 to 17 big blinds so still a lot to work with gonna try to get some sleep tonight but this just reminds me of like wrestling tournaments or crossfit competitions man 12 hour days it's a grind it's rough 
mentally, like it's really tough. Physically, it's tough too, but like I've been there before. I've done this before. I've been in tough spots. Um, like I just gotta, you know, keep my mind right. I saw so many people today just play good, good, good poker and then just punt off their stack. They get bored, they make a mistake and punt it off. And hopefully we're not gonna do that tomorrow, but I'm exhausted. We're gonna hang out, get some sleep. I'll see you guys tomorrow. A restless night's sleep and we are back. Day number three of the WPT main event playing for over $1 million. It's hard to sleep and it's hard to concentrate when you're playing for those kind of stakes. This is by far the deepest I've ever ran in a big tournament. This is by far the most money I've ever played for. We have about 13 big blinds in our stack. So basically what we're gonna try to do now is just pick our spots correctly and hopefully we can get a double up. 99 players left, over $9,000 guaranteed. Our very first hand, we're in the big blind, the button opens and we have king nine offsuit with only 11 big blinds. I'm pretty sure versus a button big stack open. This is an all in. So that is what we do. We're all in the very first hand of day number three for our tournament life with King Nine Offsuit. We are praying for a fold here. The button thinks for a while, says something about me having a pair or that he has a pair. I have no idea in real time because I was so nervous and zoned in just praying that he would fold, which he does. We end up taking down a little over three big blinds now with about 14 big blinds in our stack. After going through the small blind, we are now left on the button with 13 big blinds and 9-3 offsuit. Not going to do anything with that hand. We make the fold. Still with 13 big blinds now, I have 10-3 offsuit. Yep, I'm just going to let that one go as well. We go through the blinds again and now we're back on the button with around 10 big blinds with queen jack offsuit which is a great shovable hand from this position until an early position player makes a 2.5x. I don't want to be reshoving with queen jack offsuit here versus an early position open from a big stack so I wait for a better spot and let this one go. One more orbit goes by and we actually get a walk in the big blind which was amazing and now we're in the small blind there's an early position raise and two callers we have ace jack offsuit this is a spot that I just have no idea what to do with around 11 big blinds. In this spot with ace jack it's either all in or fold calling just seems pretty bad. Early position raiser has a massive stack as well as the other players who made the call so I don't think I have any fold equity here. I could be ahead of some of their worst ace highs or king highs or queen highs, but a lot of the time the early position raiser is going to have ace king, ace queen, and pocket pairs. Without any fold equity here, I feel like with 11 big blinds, I can try to find a better spot. Next hand, I'm going to be on the button, which means I'm going to have eight more hands to try to wait and pick up either a better hand or find a better spot to shove all in. Might have been a bad fold there, but the good news is that we've made another pay jump. 88 people left were guaranteed $10,400, but the bad news is, is that we went through the blinds again and had to fold, so we only have seven big blinds left now. We need a big hand to go all in with. We need a double up. We get dealt a pretty suited connector-ish. Eight, four of clubs. There's an early position raise and we're definitely not gonna be reshoving for seven big blinds with eight high. So we let this one go. The very next hand, we have seven big blinds and the cutoff, it folds to me. I look down at queen nine of diamonds and this is it. It's go time, we're all in. I've been super patient this entire tournament playing over 25 hours of poker and I feel like this is a great spot to rip it all in here. Seven big blinds. We are praying for a fold for my opponent so that we can chip up here to around 10 big blinds. But unfortunately, the button, a big stack, puts in a raise, which is terrible news for us. That means we ran right into the top of his range. He most likely has ace queen, ace king, or a pocket pair. Small blind folds, big blind folds. I show my hand and he shows pocket jacks. So we are crushed. We've won all of our all in so far. So let's keep this one going. The dealer puts out all low cards. No help to us. The turn is a spade, giving my opponent a spade draw. We need a queen on the river, which we do not hit. And we are out. <laughs> I know, but... There you go. 
Me and your player. Bust it out. That's it. 81st place. 2,000 entrants. 81st place for $10,400. My biggest cash to date for sure. Um, it's always bittersweet, you know, playing a tournament. I've only played a couple tournaments, cashed in a couple of them, and then making it deep and then just like not quite getting there is, uh, it's tough. Um, I'm happy with the way I played though. I really, really feel good with the way I played throughout this three day period. Like I tried to stay disciplined and tough and patient. I never punted off my stack. I never made really bad call downs. I didn't open up too wide or call off too wide or shove too wide. I don't have anything memorized. Unfortunately, I don't play tournament poker, so I don't know opening ranges for 40 big blinds or 30 big blinds. I don't know. Uh, I don't have things memorized for the snap full or snap shove charts or anything like that. So I just kind of went off my gut, honestly. I just went off of how I felt and exploited poker against other opponents and um, my experience from the last four some years playing poker and it got me to 81st place. My biggest cash yet, $10,000. Um, bittersweet though, like I would have loved to pick up some cards there at the end. Unfortunately, after like midway through a couple levels of day two yesterday, I was just card dead so long, card dead forever. Like I, I picked up aces and ace king and that was the only hands I picked up for four and a half hours. So that's a lot of hands to see and only to pick up two big hands is kind of rough. To, uh, today, you know, my best hand was like ace, seven of clubs or something in an hour and a half period. So there's not much you can do in these kind of tournaments when you're short stack, you just have to hope the cards are in your favor. And unfortunately, queen nine to pocket jacks there at the end, couldn't really do too much. I definitely played on the low variant style. Like if it was a spot between folding and calling or folding and shoving, I always picked fold. I always picked the lower var variance conservative route and I think that got me all the way to where I'm at now because I try to pick some really good spots throughout the tournament. But that play style, I think it's never gonna allow me to like run super deep or win a tournament because you have to take those spots. You have to push the envelope with, um, you know, shoving preflop, calling off preflop, playing more aggressive. And I definitely played very passive this whole tournament. Uh, it got me to 81st place, but if I ever wanna win a tournament, I have to ramp up the aggression, I think. I have to study more, um, but either way, bittersweet. Thanks to you guys on Instagram, my friends, and for you guys following along. I'm sure this is going to be a pretty insanely long video, but uh, it was fun. My deepest run yet, $10,000 profit in a tournament. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, hit that like button, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I'll see you.